hunt for it, find it, make it your own. It's the Get Thrifty Podcast. Hey, Get Thrifty Podcasters, thanks for tuning in. Today's podcast was a previously recorded episode and its message is still relevant. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the show. Welcome listeners, welcome thrifters and pickers and antiquers and DIYers from all over the country. You have discovered the Get Thrifty podcast, brought to you by your friends right here in colorful Colorado at ARC Thrift Stores. I'm your host, Maggie Savick, and we are all about sharing everything that has to do with shopping secondhand. Don't let our location deter you. We're going to talk to all sorts of interesting people who live and breathe thrifting. Whether you believe in shopping secondhand because of its positive impact on the environment or because you're searching for that one special treasure, if you are a person who's part of our unique thrift culture, please contact us. We'd love to promote your business and your social channels and share your stories and advice with our listeners. Find us on Instagram at Arc Thrift. Send us a DM and let's chat. Please welcome to the show our new friend Amber. The creative inspiration behind The Closeteer is a personal style coach and wardrobe stylist in Northern Colorado, helping women get dressed with joy and intention so they can show up to each day feeling and looking their best. A self-proclaimed thrifting ninja and vintage enthusiast, Amber loves to think outside the box when working with clients to make sure they make the most of their wardrobe and find their own unique style. Amber, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. We're so excited. We want to talk first about your business. Sure. Tell us the services you provide. Give us give us the background. Yeah. So I have been doing this self-employed for about the past six years on and off we as a family traveled for four years and it was then that I really realized that my passion for fashion if you will combined with a real desire to help women really see and know their own beauty and worth wanted to mix those two together into some kind of job that I could do on my own time I'm a full-time mom got three kiddos at home. And so while we traveled, I realized, well, obviously entrepreneurship is no because Way to go. Yes. you're able to do it anywhere. But I really just started building this one client at a time, started with a friend who she let me into her closet and into her world. And we started going through it. And I do what I like to call a closet edit. Um, a lot of those services, there are several different packages I offer because sometimes it's hard to conceptualize what that might be. But we go through certain percentage worth of your actual wardrobe, finding what it is that you love, what it is that you realize you'll never wear again, helping you discover, oh, like I actually really do love that or I never wear this because of that. And we work through some of those obstacles as well as put together ready to wear outfits down to the accessories, take pictures, put together a Pinterest board. But then a lot of the other work I love to do is kind of just helping them ask those deeper questions about what it is that makes them come alive and how do you match the outside inside. So it's a little bit of a life coaching yeah. scenario as well then. Yes. It's using style and how you show up visually in the world to kind of help you move through some of that inner work. So it's not just an addition to your closet. It's actually a purge as well. They are kind of go hand in hand. Yes. So we do some purging. I mean, honestly, it just depends on the client because some women definitely much more of a minimalist, some way more of a maximalist. And so it just, I do a pre-interview to make sure that we're really going to get in where they want to get the work done. And so, yeah, we go from there and kind of treat what they want. Absolutely. So I wonder, have you ever had clients that you've had to turn away? I mean, I don't know why that question just popped in my head. I have to ask. I have not. Okay. um, But I have had some that have required much more research on my part than others, just because it's something that I've just never dealt with. Yeah, so... That's the beauty of people is that they're all so different. 
years. Absolutely. And it never gets we boring. We may need to ask, and we'll, we'll wait till later in the podcast about the strangest client you've ever had, but sure. I'll let you think <laughs> on that one first. Yeah, I'll have to see. Yeah. Hmm. And while we're talking here, share your Instagram handle. I, I sure. find a lot of our listeners like to look at the Instagram page while mm-hmm. they listen to the podcast so they can kind of go hand in hand. Oh, What's totally. your handle? It's simply the closeteer. It's the, the word the. And then closeteer, I kind of made that word up like a mouseketeer, yeah. but having to do with your closet. So it's the word closet and then just add E-E-R at the end. Perfect. And is that your blog handle as well? Yes. And it is through WordPress. So there's a link in my Instagram to that blog where you can find services and then a, you know, about me, more info like that. So Gotcha. Okay. So let's go back even further. Even before you were married and, you know, had yes. these three kids, were you a thrifter from way back? Oh, yes. Okay. I tell us that like story. I like to call myself the hand-me-down kid. I'm one of five kids. Oh, wow. Okay. And... <laughs> My parents were missionaries, and so I don't know if you know much about that life, but oftentimes the salary is not real high. Sure. And when you have five kids, there's, you know, the struggle to just keep everybody in the right size shoes. And so we often, I mean, we had a great community, but we often would just get these bags full of hand-me-down clothing. Like Christmas. Yes. I and so those days. I just remember loving that because we weren't going out shopping a lot. Sure. And so I would take my time and just sift through all these new and bizarre options that I did not pick out myself yeah. and just find the potential in them. And so I used to cut a lot of my clothes, scissors to just make different things, try different stuff out. I had a major puff paint phase. God, I remember those days. (laughs) But yeah, I would just find weird wackadoodle ways to wear stuff. Or my mother was really great at sewing, so we did a couple of projects like that. If I really got interested in something and wanted to just make my own, did a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah, and then I do actually remember in high school. One of my favorite dresses I ever wore to a high school formal was an actual 1950s wedding dress. Oh, that's awesome. That I thrifted at a vintage store. Did you redo it or? I had it cleaned sure. because I could see the potential in it. But um, no, I just wore it as was. It was awesome. It was cool. a, like Audrey Hepburn boat oh, neck. the boat neck. But like a T-length So instead of the full floral length, it had a little bit of more interesting line to it and it had here and there, you know, embroidered beads and just, it was awesome. Do you still have it or did you donate it? Oh, that's amazing. (laughs) So maybe one of your kids can enjoy it one day. It was such a good find. It was incredible and probably half the price, honestly, than most of my friends' dresses at the time. So. Well, let's talk about that, the find and the half the price. I mean, so when you have a client, yeah. are they ever like, oh, my gosh, they go into it knowing it's going to be thrift. But when you hire someone to redo your closet, do you, do you have to kind of explain, OK, this is how it's going to work with the thrifting? And are they like, yes, excited for it? Or yeah, is that, are they well, nervous? It really depends on the client. I kind of let them choose because sure. some people are more comfortable with If we do a more personal shopping trip with them, Mm -hmm. some people are way more comfortable with a thrift store and other people feel like they need a department store just to find multiple sizes, that kind of thing. I do love to kind of start with that as thrifting as the main option, just because there, I think what it is, is there's so many options that you get at a thrift store or a consignment store that you're not always going to find at a department store. Sure, you might get the you know knowledge that you could find the same thing in five sizes, but at the same time, you're limited on the creativity. Yeah, and the uniqueness. Yeah. That's, that's exciting right there. I love it that, I mean, do you find that you're kind of turning people on to thrift as well, which is yeah, awesome? Yeah, I love the idea of reusing what other people are just done with. It's almost like a giant dress-up box (laughs) if you go to a thrift store. It's like a giant bag of hand-me-downs, honestly. And so you just have your pick of it. And if you have eyes to see, there is so much potential there. If you're willing to really go on the hunt. Mm -hmm. 
So let's talk about that concept of, you know, the reusing. I mean, is part of the reason you do this for environmental purposes or is it truly just like a, a past love that you've you know, it's actually probably morphed more into that as I've realized the impact that I think the fast textiles yes. and fast fashion has had. Mm -hmm. I was reading something in Nat Geo, a friend sent to me. She was like, oh, this totally reminded me of you. It's all about the end of trash. Oh, and tragic. A lot of the, you know, stuff in a landfill is clothing. Mm -hmm. And I think that said less than 1% of the textiles currently in the world today are recycled and reused. It really, the, the stats are staggering. Yeah, that's wild to me. I was yes. like, what? Well, what do you think about this new, I feel like, and I've asked a couple of guests this, that thrifting has just become a passion for young people. And, yeah. and many of them tell me it's for the impact. Right. What do you think happened? How did this happen? I know. I kind of love that about this new generation up and coming, that this has become a new Trendy thing in a way, which, you know, who knows how long that can last. But I do think, hey, let's ride this wave while it's here. Oh, and amen, sister. See That's where it goes. Exactly <laughs> what I say every day. Let's hope this can just keep going and going and going. Totally. We certainly have enough donations. And when you yeah. talk to people in this industry, we are inundated. Yes. I mean, you're a Coloradan. So what do you think that's about, too, with the amount that people donate? Yeah. It, it's staggering here. It is. Well, first of all, we can say thank you, Marie Kondo. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Because that was a major surge, which I find hilarious and awesome. That's funny. Yeah. You're, clearly, you're in thrift because I find it hilarious, too. Totally. I'm like, really? Oh, did that goodness. really spark this for people? But yeah. maybe it did. I know. <laughs> but I also think, I don't know, we live in a state that has been economically relatively untouched by a lot of the downturns and... Mm -hmm twists and you know, all of that business that goes on. And so I feel like we just have a lot and yeah. it's easy to accumulate without even realizing it. And then you, you know, come to spring and you start getting that spring itch. I need to clean my house. And you just realize, oh my gosh, it's yeah. been a but year and I've accumulated another whole house full worth of stuff that I don't need or use. Time to eliminate. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's totally seasonal. My husband always says that. He's just like, thank God we have a snow season because then when it gets really warm out, you're like, let's clean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah it not, really pushes you to yeah. look at everything. You're like, oh gosh. Open up and <laughs> shine the lights again. It's a yes. little scary. Mm -hmm. I do want to ask about this closet edit in a little more detail. Yeah. Um, so tell me, how do you do that? How do you walk into someone's closet and get them to purge and then add? Yeah. What's the process? So like I said, the one of the big keys is having that pre-consult, either by phone or face-to-face. -face. got to see the closet, right? <laughs> well, no, I actually have to talk to them. I don't see the closet at all. I actually just talk to them. Oh. And I have a whole kind of an interview that I do with Ooh, them. tell us about that. And so several questions that I've really thought long and hard about to try to help them even realize what is it that you're here for? What do you want most from this consult? And then simple questions about like, what are your favorite colors? What, you know... What outfit, when you wear it, do you feel amazing in? Because that just gives me an idea of really what they love. And then I also ask them the day of make your bed, because that usually is kind of our staging ground. And then we pull out, depending on the package they chose, 50% to 100% of every single piece of their clothing. It ends up being a little bit Marie Kondo, honestly. But I've been doing this since before that was a thing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we had the same idea. And we literally go kind of section by section, maybe all tops, all bottoms, all accessories. And we work our way through every piece, finding what they actually still love, what they don't. And then with what they love, we start putting together outfits. Also, if they really want to turn more minimalist we really try to create kind of a capsule for them if they are a devoted maximalist like myself 
create several capsules <laughs> so they have choices but um yeah and it just kind of goes from there and then it's really amazing when you pull everything out you really do see what you love and what you've just Held kept on in there to. because yeah. it was convenient yeah, so it's it's a really fun process. You get to know these clients really well. Oh, yeah, your closet is like your it's, secrets. Yeah, it's funny because I don't know. I, I fight sometimes the idea that clothing or fashion is shallow or, you know, not really that important. But it is in the sense that it connects to that human need to belong, to connect, yeah. and to also just show up as their best self. And so this feels like not just a closet redo. It's like a life redo and I'm totally digging it. It can be. Yeah. I really, I feel like that's my hope is that it really invigorates them and kind of releases them from maybe some things that were just holding us, you know, all of us yeah. back from really showing up fully to what's most important. Wow. Because it's not about the clothes, but it is about the clothes. Absolutely. It's kind of both and. One of your blog posts was talking about, you know, clearing this space in your closet and for one month, wear it. If you wear it, it goes on this side. Explain that. How, how does that yeah, work? Yeah. So we sometimes, if I don't have as much time with a client, I give them this little homework where either put a little marker on the bar of your closet, be it a scarf or a you know, colorful hanger. And for a whole month, just wear what you want to wear. But when you put it back the, that night, put it on one side of that marker so that by the end of the month, you see what is it that I really reached for, wanted to wear for this whole month. And sure. look then, I mean, it's really self-research. You can do the same with, you know, your folded clothes where you put like a Divider or something in it could that be like drawer. an LP, yeah. like a record or sure. you know, a piece of cardboard that's about the size of the the stack oh, of I like clothes. That. And the same thing, like whatever you wear, put it on top, and then you'll see. Okay, these are the things I wear in rotation most often. Look at the things you didn't wear and uh -huh. ask yourself, like, why? So it's it really is a, a self reflection process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay. so that's a good homework piece for you know, when I just don't have as many hours with the person. Gotcha. Free advice, listeners. Take it or leave it. <laughs> Take it, I suggest. And please reach out and check out her Instagram page for more info. But before we uh, move on here, I've got to talk about how you thrift because a lot of people yeah. tune in because they want to understand how you approach a thrift store, your mantras, you know. So totally. let's get into that. First question, when you hit a thrift store, do you have a specific category you're looking at? How do you do it? Well, I have become pretty familiar with the stores in my area. I consider consignment to be a type of thrift. Oh, absolutely. Just because it's curated thrift, sure. Can really. you share some of the consignment stores you Yeah. Hit? Some of my favorites in Fort Collins, sure. that's northern Colorado, are the Flamingo Boutique, which is in our old town. That's run by a couple of sisters that are just delightful. And they do That's such a good job. When yeah, the proprietor is fun and mm -hmm. into thrift. Totally, that's cool. And they they grew up doing the same thing. Their dad would take them to garage sale and flea markets, and they would you have know, certain things they had to look for. There is a really unique subculture. It's of thrifters so out funny. Here. <laughs> yes. So I just feel like they curate some of the most interesting things that I really I always find something there, and they have a really great consignment policy, which is awesome. So you sometimes will resell yeah, some of your items there? for sure. Very cool. That's, that's another thing I love to do is if I do thrift and bring something home, I try to kind of do that one in, one out. It's a tough rule. It is, but it also, I found that it really keeps creativity flowing. Sure. Because you stuff your closet full to bursting and you never release something, you don't have more room to receive. And you can't see it. Yeah, and you can't see it. It's practical. It's hard to find yeah. that one-of-a-kind item that you loved so much, and now oh. it's buried in your closet. So when you walk into, like, one of these big box thrift stores, yeah. like ARC, do you have a category you hit first? You know, I usually go to either the return racks, mm -hmm. I don't know, like, you know, where they have those right outside the, the fitting backs, room. Yes. Yep. 
That is one of the easiest places to start. Okay, that is a great tip. Yeah, because it's already pre-curated to a degree. Like, people wanted Someone those. Someone was interested in it. They didn't maybe fit, or they just decided they had too many items. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so, I love that. That's yeah. a really unique and so tip. so those are a great place to hit first okay. just to start and kind of see what mood you're in. Because mm-hmm. sometimes you're like, meh, I'm not feeling it over here, so maybe I'll go to shoes, or maybe I'll go to home goods. Because I don't just thrift clothing. I love all of the area. Really? So fun. What else besides clothing? Oh, my goodness. Husband and I, we joke that thrifting is our love language. <laughs> oh, I like that. And so we often <laughs> will take a quick pass through the furniture. Because mm-hmm. my husband loves to refinish old furniture. And so we have a, a house right now that is kind of that mid-century era of when it was built. Love so that. we will look. We have this thing for chairs. So again, fun chairs, vintage, fun, really well made or real wood chairs. We're always on the lookout for. Thrift store, best totally. place to find those items. I found one of my favorite chairs at Ark one day. Really, I literally had I don't know what it was, fifteen twenty minutes before I had to be at the next thing. So you just Sometimes can't go home. Best. Yeah, and so I popped in and perused, and there it was. This mid-century with a little green back and green Ooh. cushion but real wood you didn't slanted have legs to redo it at all it was wow. seven dollars oh now do you have like a policy on how you clean up i mean so people have how do you clean your yeah. items we i would say i joked with a friend i'm not grossed out by thrift Shoes. So if that tells you anything, okay. <laughs> tells me a lot. <laughs> I think there's a level at which people are like, oh, no, I can't do it. But I mean, if it's washable, I'll wash it. Sure. But like a chair like that, well, you know, sometimes I'll let my husband sand down old varnish and re-oil yeah, it. Or sure. That kind of stuff. Try to clean up the upholstery as best you can, but sometimes just not pop life into it. Yeah. So would you say, well, that's my next question then. What's the coolest thing you've ever thrifted? And Either most valuable or just like amazing memory ah. or anything like that. Oh my goodness. There's so many things. It's hard to choose because even like categories are different for me. So I would say the coolest thing that we've ever found secondhand is this Koa wood like surfboard coffee table what it's insane it's beautiful we lived in hawaii for about seven months and so we would go to the markets and like these pieces these slabs of koa wood that they would sell in those markets ran about three to four hundred dollars a piece just for a slab and then (laughs) we moved back to colorado and this woman was selling this coffee table it's like a surfboard coffee table, almost live edge with like those mid-century modern oh, legs. Oh, wow. That's for special. For $50. What? She did not know what she had. No. And wow. we did. <laughs> so we went and got it. <laughs> so, well, let's, I got to ask that. I mean, how, how's the thrifting and secondhand market in Hawaii? Is it interesting? Is there one? It is. Oh, man. That is one of the best tips I have for if you're traveling wow. to islands. Yeah. Go to the thrift shop. And pick up all your snorkel gear because all the tourists went and bought it new. Oh, and they leave it there? And they left it. And they used it for two weeks. Okay, that's an excellent tip. Yeah, it's amazing. And fun stuff, like antique stuff. Mm -hmm. So instead, I'm doing that. Instead of buying all the souvenir junk that's going to be, you know, at the bottom of the toy box when you get home. Oh, definitely. Cool. There's so many options. And since we were traveling light, so my husband was a travel nurse. And so he just took contracts at different hospitals. We basically outfitted our apartments via Craigslist or sure. thrift stores. And so we called it like renting from Goodwill. I love that. <laughs> you just find a piece of furniture Borrow and then and when you move, you yeah. donate it back. Donate back. Yeah. Oh, the cycle of our things. It's so great. It and really then, is. I mean, really, you realize, too, what you really So. Well, I'm inspired by your Instagram page, and I mean, a couple of things that I read today were especially fitting for me. I have to tell you, I put on this coat this morning, 
And yeah. one of my unnamed coworkers kind of gave me a hard time about this wool coat. It's casual Friday at my office. And I love this coat and this this brooch. But I was going and insta-stalking you, as I always do before <laughs> these podcasts. And it was this picture of you as a child in your cowl neck sweater mm-hmm. and your braces. And you're oh, like, totally. this little girl didn't care. No. And I don't care either. And I'm going to rock my wool coat. And everyone else can just, you know, take a flying leap. And deal with it. Right? Yeah. And I love the coat you walked in with today, too. Yes, which I did tell you the same. I got shade from one of my (laughs) employee, well, employers, my daughter. (laughs) She told me this morning, Mom, I think that coat's a little much. (laughs) And I said, What? That makes me want to wear it all the exactly. more. Exactly. And I'm going to keep all day. it on and I'm leaving the fur collar <laughs> on, even though it's removable. See, I think that that's a great lesson for everyone <laughs> that listens to this podcast. Rock what you love. Yes. Wear and it's it. okay sometimes to be a little extra. Yes. Even if where you live, nobody else dresses like that, you got to just be yourself. Oh, that is a fantastic note to end on. But I do have one more question because we always ask, put it out there. Actually, two more questions. Put it out there, the holy grail item, anything you're seeking to find right now in the thrift world. Perhaps a listener out there has found it or Uh can locate it in the deepest, darkest reaches of their grandmother's basement. What is that holy grail item? Oh, my goodness. I would love to find like a five or six foot long mirror. Ooh. With a giant gaudy gold frame. Oh, okay. That's a doable <laughs> one. So bonkers, but <laughs> I have just the spot for it. It would be so fun to have. Oh okay. Well, hopefully the thrift gods are listening or a listener <laughs> and it will suddenly appear at one of the stores hey, that you rock this weekend. I'm hoping. You never know. Put it out there. Yeah. All right. So this one's a little out of left field, but we ask everyone this. Don't be perturbed. Don't be scared of this question. Just answer as honestly as possible. So as you know, this podcast is a huge fan of vintage queen herself, Dolly Parton. Oh, yes. Yes. How do you feel about Dolly Parton? Is there any special story or unique oh, piece and... of info you can tell us? Yes. Oh. She was in, inspirational when I kind of came out of the fog of motherhood. You know how? Yes. I don't know if you have little kids at home and then they kind of get to an age where they're a little bit more self-reliant and you can think a little bit. So I got my hair done finally. And I remember this quote just like smacking me in the face. It said, if you want to be taken seriously, you got to have serious hair. My God, that is perfection. I love Dolly for that. (laughs) You know, I've tried to stump so many guests, and so far, everyone has had a connection to Dolly Parton. So thank you. Oh, yeah. For not breaking my stride here. Appreciate that. You're so welcome. (laughs) You have been an absolute delight. Share again one more time your Instagram handle and how people can find your blog if they'd like to get a hold of you for services. Definitely. You can find me on Instagram at The Closeteer. Just all one word, no spaces. And my blog is theclosetier.wordpress.com. Listeners, thanks so much for joining us today. A reminder, please subscribe and leave us a five-star review. Maybe even write us a review. That really helps our ratings. And if you're part of this unique thrift culture and you'd like to join this podcast, please send me an email, maggie at arcthrift.com, or reach out via Instagram at arcthrift. It's the Get Thrifty Podcast. This podcast was powered by Arc Thrift Stores, edited by Avocet Communications, sound by Claire Dubois.